Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about growing in fabric pots. These are root pouches. I'm affiliated with them and I sell these at my seed shop. The fabric pots are wonderful. These are determined variety tomatoes. It's the end of August. They did really well. I'm going to harvest everything off of here, um, make sauce with them. And I'm going to be pulling these out and transitioning over to the fall crop. So I'm going to put in peas, lettuce. I'll show you some of that. But today I just wanted to show you the uh, growth of the determinate tomatoes at their end. I'll talk about the varieties in case you want to try and grow those. And really we're going to refresh the soil. You don't have to dump all the soil out to get ready for your fall crops. I'll show you how I do that using organic fertilizers and worm castings. You don't have to do both, but I'll show you how to use them. So just real quick, these uh, tomatoes were put out in May, uh, actually a little bit later than May, I think in June. And I'm really picking the second, third wave of tomatoes off of here. The determinate varieties get to a set height, they flower, they fruit, and they don't do much after that. But these now, are all determinates. That's a better bush. Not much left on there except a couple red tomatoes. No new flowers, no new fruit. This is a Roma plum tomato. For Romas, this one did really well. No blossom end rot. This is a celebrity variety. That's also somewhat of a semi-determinant, and you can just see all the nice large tomatoes on there. That one's going to get pulled out though. Um, the biggest problem I had with these is they did really well in these 10 gallon pots. Is they got big and heavy and really bent the metal cages. So they're going to have to be staked up stronger next year, maybe using some bamboo. But just look at all the Roma plums. Really, really productive. A couple more better bushes. And I mixed up the plum type with a couple four to six ounce fruits. So these are going to come out Let's freshen up this soil using the castings and the organic fertilizers and we'll get to planting some of the fall crops. So when you're transitioning from spring to summer, from summer to fall, you do have to refresh your soil with your fertilizers and worm castings. You don't have to use worm castings. I pretty much use them all the time. I just don't always show them in videos because I don't want you to feel like you must use worm castings in your containers. So when you have your potting mix or your container mix set up, about every two or three years, you have to dump out the entire mix, add in some peat moss, cocoa core, compost, some other potting mix, and kind of refresh the entire um, container mix. You don't have to do it every year, but you do have to put in your fertilizers if you're going you know, into a new crop. So we're going from the tomatoes into some cool weather crops. So any organic fertilizer is fine. They're mostly the same. Just try and stay around a 5.55. Five, five. So you'll need a water soluble too. I use fish emulsion and a granular organic. If you have compost, certainly use that. We all don't have compost. You can mix some compost, you know, put about an inch or two on here and mix that in when we do the uh, organic fertilizer. Now, worm castings. I just got a worm casting bin. I'm making my own worm castings. I love the product. I like to call this the end product of nature. It really has everything that your plants want. And that's why when you have a garden full of compost and worms, your plants tend to do better because they're getting the castings or the droppings from the worms. The droppings have all the major fertilizers your plant need, trace elements, micronutrients, um, humic acid, growth hormones, and they have something that's called, it's an enzyme. I may not have the name right, but I think it's called chitinase. And that enzyme actually breaks down the shells, the exoskeleton of insects that they might eat. And it comes out, you know, when they, you, uh, they send out their waste in the form of castings. That enzyme in the soil, there's really good research to show that that helps deter beetles and insects from your garden. So I'll show you how to use the worm castings first. I recommend Vermistera because when you buy their product pound for pound, you're getting worm castings. You're not getting compost with castings in it. And whatever product you choose to buy, make sure you're getting worm castings. You're not getting compost and castings. There's no regulation on it. So anything can really say castings as long as it has some castings. This is just aged for, I believe, about seven years, sifted and you get worm castings. It's beautiful stuff. It has everything I was talking about in it. So pound for pound, you're getting castings in here. You're not getting the compost. So if I were doing a tomato plant, it's about a half a cup to a cup. I would just put it right into the soil, mix it through, 
and that's how I use the castings to set up a transplant that I'm putting in there. Now, since I'm good to go, be doing some seeding, um, some pea, uh, pea seeds, leafy greens, really about a cup spread across the top. We're going to work that in to the top four inches. Now, if you have mulch on top, you don't necessarily always want to mix the woody mulch through, but this is well broken down. So if you're going to mix in wood to your container mix, just make sure that it's broken down nicely. Let's get rid of that weed. So about a cup of the worm castings. If you don't want to use the castings, that's fine. And just mix it in. You also want to break up any of the old root balls that were in here from the tomato plant. Just loosen it up. So that's essentially how I use the castings and it really makes a difference in my opinion. Now let's say you don't want to use castings, you just want to go with the fertilizer. One handful across the top, one handful across the top. If your hands are really small, I guess you could do two, you can't really overdo it. This is where you would just really mix it in. and just break up the root ball. This is going to be perfect for planting pea seeds, some of my lettuce transplants. And just that quick, you can mix in the castings and the granular fertilizer. And that's a great setup to get your fall crops into here. Now I like using the fabric pots that out because one you can move them around they're lightweight they're easy the root systems will grow through the bottom of the fabric out the side of the fabric too the root system if you're growing on uh, wood chips like this will grow into the ground it will help support the plant that's not going to happen in your plastic containers also when the roots grow out they grow through this fabric the air dries them it's called air pruning and that root, instead of coiling and getting thick, kind of branches off and it just gets a nice fibrous root system. And I think the plant does a lot better. If, it hit, if a root hits plastic, it just keeps growing and it coils and coils and coils. And, you know, the plants survive, but I see plants thriving better in fabric pots. So that's the basic setup. We'll get to some quick planting. Quick planting of a salad garden. You're also going to need a water-soluble fertilizer. I recommend fish emulsion. It's a nice 5-1-1 NP and K. And the 5 nitrogen is great for your leafy greens. Again, I like the 10 gallon fabric pots from Root Pouch. They're really versatile and you'll see that we're going to really pack in a lot of the cool weather crops. Root Pouch also uses recycled water bottle plastic. That's another reason I really like them. They, they're taking those water bottles out of the oceans, literally and using it in the design of their fabric. So we're going to do transplants first and some peas. We're also going to hit radishes, lettuce, and arugula. So the transplants are a little beat up because it's been hot here, but just pop them out. There's two plants in each of these plugs, maybe one if one of them died off like in this one. We're going to really pack in three plants. In the back, the peas are going to go right here, and there's a tomato cage for trellising. Pea plants have hollow stems, so they need support. And all you do, I mean, once you set it up with the fertilizer, dig a hole, pop it in, press it in. Dig a hole, pop it in, press it in. Now, it's been 90 degrees here regularly for the last four weeks or so. The weather's finally starting to break. Next week, we could even have some 70 degree days. That's when you want to get your cool weather crops. When you're going from the high, 80s, 90s of summer days into the lower 80, 70 degree days. It's a perfect time. So we have three transplants in there. All this will be watered in with the fish emulsion at the end. I'm not going to show you that to save some time. In a 10 gallon pot, if you were just doing peas, you could put in 8 or 10 peas. You can really grow a lot. These are purple potted. We'll put four. Let's turn it the right way. Sometimes the light bleaches this. Purple pods. These are all sugar snaps, which means we can eat the pods. And we're going to put in four just standard green pods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
about an inch apart, press them down one inch. The container mix is really loose, the peas will do just fine. Cover them up, and this is one pot that's set up with leafy green transplants, lettuce, and peas. Okay, let's do a couple more. So for this container, I want to put in arugula and a red leaf lettuce. Let's get this out of the way. Any big clumps of roots or anything, get rid of. And then you just want to press it down. Nice, solid planting base. This is a called Marvel of Four Seasons. It's a red leafy lettuce. Again, sometimes the picture gets washed out. And we're going to sow this as cut and come again lettuce. So we're going to harvest it when it's a baby lettuce. There's a good 30 seeds in here maybe. Sprinkle them around. Scatter them throughout here. So when they get a couple inches tall, we're just going to cut off the leaves, leave the roots in there. And they will keep coming back until a hard freeze comes and takes them. We're also going to mix some arugula in there. And probably about 10 to 15 seeds. Scatter them around. And they'll be harvested the same way. So once they're in there, we're just scratching them in about a half an inch. And you just want them scattered around. Any big clumps of roots or chips, get rid of them. You don't want a seed to be under a piece of wood because you're going to have a hard time breaking the surface. So just remove any big pieces. Pat it in and we would water this in again with the fish emulsion. And this will be a nice pot of arugula and red lo loose leaf lettuce. It will be perfect for salads. It will go along with the peas that will come up. You can also eat pea tendrils. You don't just have to eat the pods. You can eat the tendrils. And while this lettuce is getting ready, the other lettuce that we planted as transplants will be harvested first. Okay, one more planting. So we're going to drop in some more pea plants. Again, you can eat the peas, of course, the pods, and you can eat tendrils. We're going to put in, let's say, we're going to put in six pea plants, one inch apart. Right along the back. Press them in one inch and they're good to go. There's plenty of room in the 10 gallon fabric pots. And then we're gonna do French breakfast radishes. And the way I like to do those, first of all, they're oblong, they're thin, we can put them one inch apart. So I just like to press in a hole about an inch apart, half an inch deep. Let's see how many we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we can get 18 radishes out of here. The French uh, breakfast germinate quickly, especially when it's warm, and they mature within under 30 days. Put two seeds per hole, and if two seeds germinate, you could leave them in there. Sometimes French breakfast do well, but they both germinate. You wanna thin them down to one seed for maximum size, and then just cover them up. Water it in with the fish emulsion and you're good to go. All right, the 10 gallon pots are perfect for really packing in your cool weather crops, your leafy greens, radishes, peas, arugula. So we have one set up here. The peas are growing up the tomato cage. So just that quickly we transitioned from the warm season tomatoes into our cool season crops, refresh the soil. If you're interested in the worm castings, you can find a discount code in the video description and you can find root pouches at my seed shop. Hope you enjoyed the video and I highly encourage you to transition over to the fall garden, get in some loose leaf lettuce, arugula, uh, radishes, peas, and other leafy greens. You got a good 60 days worth of growing left. Thanks for watching.